Happy Mother's Day, bi- Everybody, it's Drewski McGillicuddy, and here's the big surprise. I'm actually doing a horror movie review. Well, it's pretty much horror. It's kind of like a rape revenge type movie. Uh, it's Mother's Day because it's uh, it's Mother's Day. So before I get started talking about the movie, I want to talk about my history with the movie because this is a first time watch for me and the secretary. Now, roughly. <laughs> God damn it! Roughly 10 or 11 years ago, there was a place called Buybacks, and I was traversing, traversing through the aisles, and I came across the M's, and there was a movie called Mother's Day from Troma, nonetheless. And I was a big fan of the Toxic Avenger films, but I never really delved that deep into Troma. I mean, I was aware of movies like Tromeo and Juliet and the class of Newcomb High, but I'd never watched them. Uh, I did happen to be a big fan of Redneck Zombies, although for the longest time I didn't, I wasn't aware that that was trauma. I, I used to, you know, want to buy this at the buybacks, but for some reason it was uh, a little more expensive than most movies. So I, I passed it up, but by, by those standards back then, $20 wasn't too much to pay for something like this on DVD. Needless to say, I didn't buy it, which I, to this day, regret. Because then, it happened again, believe it or not. My first year at Horror Hound in Cincinnati, there was a trauma booth in which they had Mother's Day. But, for some reason, it was 40 motherfucking dollars. And this was back before I would spend more than $10 on a movie. Because, you know, I'm cheap. Well, we were broke that year, too. Did you hear that? We passed it up that year. Went back the next year and following years to discover that it was completely unavailable. Uh, but now, recently, I've discovered that, you know, I can acquire it at a hefty price tag. Look, there's this one. Like... And it was Spanish. I don't know if it was buy it now, but you know, you, it, it'll say there now because I don't remember. But look, there it is. And then there's this one for eighty dollars. Was that buy it now? I don't know. But then there's another one for hundred and eleven dollars. Either way, I've got to have this movie on physical copy, even though I watched it on Shutter because it was free. I figured, you know, I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on something until I'm absolutely sure. And now I'm spoiling the rating because if I'm willing to spend this kind of money on a movie, it's got to be good, right? Because here's the thing. You know, I never really knew what this movie was about. I knew it was about, you know, a crazy mother that had her sons and they were demented or something like that. But I, I wasn't expecting it to be like this because it was from Trauma. Which it's not really a trauma movie, but there's funny backstory because it was directed by Lloyd Kaufman's brother, but Lloyd wanted nothing to do with this movie, but somehow trauma ended up owning it anyway. So the movie revolves around, well, it opens up, and like when it opened up, like, like I said, I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting some schlocky, trashy type schlock. Like the Toxic Avenger, Mother's Day uh, opens with they're at this like uh, it's like a graduation of sorts for these people that learned how to you know be happy that they're alive or something like that. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. One of those feel good seminars. One of them. One of them feel good seminars, and they're all graduating from the seminar. And there's this little old lady, and she's all you know. And I, I guess these two people need a ride home and she's going to oblige them. And it's funny because, you know, even though I had a feeling because it's called Mother's Day and I've seen the cover that this was a setup because, you know, these people, you know, guys in the back seat with a rope, stretching it out, getting ready to, you know, 
and then the car breaks down. So they can't they can't kill her while the car's breaking down. They gotta they gotta get her to fix the car. Don't worry about that. The fact of the matter is, they was gonna you know rob this lady, steal her car, and possibly leave her dead on the side of the road. But before they had a chance, the car breaks down. She gets out of the car and goes to fix the car. All of a sudden, here comes a dude with a machete and just cuts this motherfucker's head off. And it was fucking glorious, okay? Fucking glorious. Even by 1980s standards. And that's the thing. This movie was shot for $115,000. In some of the same locations. I'm going to kill that cat. But yeah, it was shot in the same locations as the first two Friday the 13th. And you'll recognize that if you've got a keen eye like I do, because even before we looked it up to verify it, I said, hey, God damn it, that's Friday the 13th. Hey, that's Friday the 13th part two, because it was either a clerk sign or a golf sign. I said, I've seen that goddamn gas station before. Side to point. So yeah, they cut this dude's head off in glorious fashion and then just pull this bitch out the car and, you know, it's, they, they brutalize her and kind of like, you know, you, 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 you get the idea. I uh, probably can't shit. They probably, probably ain't on YouTube. I don't know. But uh, he just beats the shit out of her. And then the, the, the makeup effects, like, within the first 10 minutes of the goddamn movie, I'm thinking, you know, this is trauma, which, you know, the Toxic Avenger has decent makeup effects, but some of them are a little over the top. Well, these were, you know, realistic. And the other fucked up thing about this movie is the acting is way, way fucking better than I expected it to be. And that in light some problem later on in the movie because like the acting was so good it was almost making me uncomfortable watching some of the shit that was uh, unfolding in front of me. That's just the first ten minutes of the movie. Then we cut to these three college roommates that, you know, are, are reminiscing, and then we get a little bit of backstory. There's one who's like kind of a ritzy bitch, and then there's one who's got a troubled home life with her mother, and then there's one who lives, I mean, she's a responsible adult who's got this uh, man-child living with her that steals money out of her fucking purse and just sleeps all day while she's off working, even though snorts it... Snorts all her cocaine. Snorts, snorts all her cocaine. With Snirt. the $50 bill that he stole from Well, it was purse. a $20 bill. No, it was a $50 it bill. It was a... Well, I don't know. I could have swore it was a 20 But that's not the fucking point. Damn it, I forgot their names again. But that doesn't matter what their names are. There's Addy. I don't care. It doesn't matter. We're not here to talk about people by their name. The point is, one of the girls is taking the other two girls. Because I guess they got these traditions where, you know, since they don't live together anymore, once a year, they set a weekend to where... I don't know if they take turns picking where they go yes. or uh, yeah they take turns picking where they go and then they blindfold the other two and then they go where they're going and they get there and they just happen to be going to Camp Crystal Lake. So <laughs> they get to Camp Crystal Lake but they stop for beer because you know any any good horror movie you gotta stop for beer and have the old man at the gas station tell you you kids ought not be going messing around there. But, you know, they kind of fucked up his store, so, you know, he hopes they get what they deserve, which they don't deserve what happens to them in this movie. Jesus Christ. Moral of the story is they're going camping in the woods, and then, you know, what, what unfolds is one of the most underrated, under-talked about, lesser-known, less-seen horror movies of the 1980s. And this predates Friday the 13th, by the way. Even though it was shot on the same locations, this came out in 1980, so it was fucking shot in 1979. And this is like... Well, we'll say it mirrored. It, it mirrored them. Because they both came out in 1980. Oh. came out at the same time as Friday the 13th. Okay? But it's a completely different movie. This is more along the lines of I Spit on Your Grave and Deliverance and stuff like that. Uh, and I just, I'm beside myself for not having bought this movie way back when. Or I almost wish, and, and who knows, maybe I did see it when I was a little kid, but it was called Mother's Day. And, you know, to a little kid, it's like, who wants to watch a fucking movie called Mother's Day when you're a little kid? Even though this would have been on repeat viewing in my household had I watched it as a little kid. 
But yeah, these girls that go out in the woods, they get kidnapped, you know, they get tied up in their sleeping bags and drugged back to this old shanty shack house in the woods, which they filmed at. And the reason they they just found this house in the middle of the woods and nobody had lived there for 15 years because the previous owner had been murdered in it. And that's real shit. Murder. Anyway, uh, so they, they take them back to the house, they tie them up, and then they take turns uh, having uh, theater rape. I, I don't know, it's very theatrical. They, they, they dress them up in costumes, tie them up to a park bench, and then, you know, brutalize and, and sexually assault them. Her. 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 The one. Okay, because the other two are upstairs waiting their turn, but they don't get their turn because there's a turn of events. Which you don't need to know about because I'm sure you ain't ever seen this fucking movie. And I can tell from, you know, it being 11 minutes already that I've already said too much. And I need to stop running off at the fucking mouth and just, you know, convince you by the enthusiasm and the spark that this is lit under my ass. For you to go out and get Shudder or go spend $100 on a motherfucker, Devon Graham. I don't give a fuck what you do. But go out and get Mother's Day. And who cares what day of the year it is. It's always a good day for some fucking Mother's Day. And, and just, god damn it, the performances in this movie were so good. The fucking cinematography was so good. And I don't know what the DVD or the VHS look like, but if, it, if it's anything like what I saw on Shudder, if I get the Blu-ray, it'll be worth the $100 price tag. So, uh, go out, yeah, here you go, go out and buy it. Whatever I gotta do to piss people off. Anyway, uh, that has been my review of Mother's Day. Secretary, what'd you think? I was blown away by that movie. And the fact that it didn't look cheap, the acting was amazing, the characters were likable and very engaging, and the kills, the kills were just. Oh creative. my God! Right in the gooch. See, and I wanted beautiful. to show it. Can I show? I can't even probably no, can't even don't find show it. show that. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to see don't it. Go, fucking, no. let it happen before your eyes. Anyway, uh, if you've liked this crap, please click these buttons right here. And if I could bum a dollar off of you, I'd greatly appreciate it. You know, you can always donate more. You know, depending on how generous you feel. But I love you all. Uh, happy Mother's Day again, like I said in my other video. Like, you got two videos in one day. Can you believe it? Anyway, for Christ's sake, get the fuck out.